Today, we are gonna hunt for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. This is the Google XSS game, and today we are going to be solving levels five and six. In the last two videos, we've already solved level one through four, so if you haven't already, be sure to check them out as we are building directly upon the knowledge gained in those videos. But without further ado, let's get into level five of the Google XSS game. This is level five breaking protocol. And the target looks like this. We have a welcome message announcing the Groovy Reader 2.0 and we can sign up for an exclusive beta, which we will obviously want to do because that's the only functionality on this page on our target. So let's sign up. And now we see that we have to enter an email address. Okay, I'm just gonna enter pinkdraconian at integrity.com and go to next. Now it says, thanks for signing up, you will be redirected soon. And if we wait for a second, we see that we get redirected to the main page once again. And that seems to be all the functionality this page has to offer. So that is very limited functionality, but in the last episodes, we've already seen how to go about uh, constructively finding XSSs. And in this case, one thing that we can do is try to find a reflected XSS and a burp suit plugin could help us with that, a plugin that's gonna look through all the user data submitted in requests and see if that is reflected in the response. So let's go back to burp. I have the reflector plugin that we installed in the first video running. And if I go to my targets, we see that for xssgame.appspot.com, we have a possible XSS. In this case, it tells us that a reflected parameter was found in the body and that is next. It's reflected one time. Okay, I don't seem to remember a parameter next that I inputted. What's going on here? Well, let's look at the request. And in the request, we see uh, that in the get request to level five frame signup, there was a next get parameter with the value confirm. Now in the response, we see that here at the bottom, the value confirm appears as well. So there is potentially a relationship between the two as in, well, we supply the next get parameter in a request and in the response, we see it appear on the page. Now, obviously this could just be coincidence. So we have to look a little further and see if this is actually the case. And we can very simply do that by just filling out our next parameter to something different, such as integrity. Now we see this page once again, uh, but we can check it out here in burp again, because now we see that our request with the next parameter set to integrity, and in the response, we can see that at the bottom, now it says integrity in an href in an a tag. Now that is very, very interesting. Why? Well, we have some point of reflection, so this could potentially become an XSS. Let's see what we can do here, because we are now reflecting into an attribute. Maybe we can escape from that attribute. Uh, maybe that will work. So to do that, well, I'm gonna enter as next, just integrity, and then a quote. And that quote is going to then escape out of that attribute. And then we can start a new attribute, which is gonna have a value. Something like this might work. So let's do that and check what the response is. And in this case, the response is uh, integrity, ampersand, quad, semicolon, then our attribute, another ampersand, quad. What is going on here? Well, that ampersand, quad is an HTML entity, and these are pretty much used to prevent XSS. So what will happen is uh, the browser will see that and change it into an actual quote, but it won't parse it as such. Does this? What this means is the browser will still see all of this as the href, and it's pretty much a safe way of including these characters in attributes, for example. So uh, we're kind of stuck there. We, we cannot really get past this since there seems to be a way to prevent XSS. However, the context matters a lot as well. We've seen that in the previous episode. And in this case, we are injecting in an A with an href, so a user might then go and press this next button. And in this case, well, the user will probably press the next button because there is no real other way of going forth on this page. So if I now press this next button, well, what happens? Our URL now contains integrity quote attribute equals value. Okay, that is really interesting. We seem to be able to control something in the URL bar now. Is there any way we could use that? Um, and now you might wonder, well, we could perhaps 
instead of just giving it a value, we could give it a full URL, such as, for example, HTTPS and then integrity.com. What will happen in this case? Because now our href value points directly to a URL. And if you know how HTML works, then you know that this will, well, visit that URL if you click the next button. So let's click this button. And now we see that we get redirected to integrity.com. That is also very, very interesting. We, we have a sort of open redirect already, but we want to get an XSS here. Now, currently we have looked at HTTP and HTTPS, but are those the only protocols or schemes that we can use? No. And let me show you a Wikipedia page that lists a bunch of other protocols and schemes that we can use uh, in these situations. And I am here on a Wikipedia page titled list of URI schemes. Now, if we look at these, we can find a bunch of weird stuff here. We should also be able to find HTTP in here somewhere. So if I look for HTTP, we can find HTTP and HTTPS here, which is already great. Well, that those are uh, the two ones that we, that we all know about. Um, you might also know about the FTP one and SFTP one. Those are also quite interesting, but this list is incredibly, incredibly long. And there are some very interesting ones in here. One could be Spotify. Well, we could, what, what does that do? Well, it opens Spotify. And as you can see here, it is an example to open up a specific track with that ID. So, well, just for fun, let's try that out. If I want to share my favorite song in an unethical way through an XSS, is that possible? Well, let's try it out. So back on my page, I'm gonna set the next get parameter to Spotify colon track and then my favorite track. And if I press enter and press next on this page, we see that my browser wants to open Spotify. And if I open it and go to Spotify, oh, my favorite track Clouds by NF starts playing. That is so cool. Like you can do a lot of really fun stuff with these uh, URI schemes, but we want to get an XSS. That is the goal of this video, get an XSS. How are we gonna do that? Well, perhaps there is also a way to execute scripts. So let's do a find for script here and the JavaScript URI scheme pops up. Now that is interesting because the description is execute JavaScript code. And as you can see here, we just have to supply JavaScript colon and then the JavaScript to execute. So would it be as simple as that? Well, let's try that out. So. I'm going to set my next parameter to, well, JavaScript colon alert. I press enter. Of course, nothing happens because our a tag now. So if we go into inspect element, we see that our a tag is now an href to JavaScript alert. Okay. Interesting. Let's press the next button and we see that an alert actually pops up and that we have solved this challenge and we're allowed to advance to the next level. So in this case, we used a reflected XSS, but our, our, our context was very important. We were injecting in an href, so we had to get creative with it. And that creativity is something that a lot of people love about XSS. So definitely get creative with it. But that's it for level five. Let's move on to the last and final level of this video series, and that is level six. Level six, follow the white rabbit. We see a page of glove gadgets and it says it loaded a gadget from slash static slash gadget dot JS. Okay, interesting. We see in the URL that that gadget dot JS is there as well. So perhaps this is a reflected XSS. Let's take a look at what the burp suite reflector plugin found. So I'm gonna go here into my target and I see that it didn't find anything. It didn't report any potential XSS. Okay, so reflected XSS is probably not possible here because, well, if there's no values being reflected, then that is most likely not the way to go. However, reflected XSS is not the only thing you have to check for. You also have to check for DOM-based XSS, for example. And in our last video, we talked about DOM Invader, a great tool to detect that. So uh, let's open up DOM Invader. So uh, in the browser, you can do it up here. On the Burpsuit plugin, you can select DOM Invader and make sure it's on. And then in your console, you have the DOM Invader field here. This will give you a canary and you can then input that into places on the website. And if your string, your canary is used in a sync, so a dangerous JavaScript function, and you will be notified of it so you can go and investigate that. So in this case, uh, the only way of input I see is up here. So I'm just gonna enter that and go. And we see that it loaded the gadget from, well, or value here, 
But more importantly, we see that Dom Invader said that there was a sync here, script.source is being used with our canary. Okay, script.source is being used. That's quite interesting because setting the source on a script is very vulnerable because if we can control where a script is going to get its information, the code to execute, well, then we just control the code to execute, right? So let's check that out. So in my elements tab here, I am just going to select this here and go into there to see where this code is running because a DOM based XSS is happening on the client itself. So we should be able to find the code here. And in the head, um, we see our script tag being loaded with our source that obviously doesn't exist, so that won't work. But we also see this different script tag here and that contains some code. This is quite interesting. Let's find out uh, where our script.source happens and that happens right here. So script el, script element.source is equal to URL and the script element is, uh, well, a document.create element of script. Now our URL is a parameter to that function, include gadget. So where does you include gadget get used? Well, all the way below here, we see that include gadget is being used with get gadget name. Okay, get gadget name, what is get gadget name? That is a function here that's gonna return window.location, your URL, then dot hash, the part of the URL uh, with the hashtag and after the, it, and then dot substring one, so only the part after the hashtag in your URL. So, that is going to be the gadget name, the source of this script, which is also what we see happening here. Well then, we control something very interesting here. All we need to give it is a URL. So if we were able to say, okay, HTTP slash slash and then um, mydomain.com slash xss.js, and xss.js will then contain JavaScript code that it should execute. And that should be all that we should enter. So, okay, let's try to create that mydomain.com so that we actually have uh, something to try out here. For that, I have my, my uh, virtual machine here and I've created a file uh, xss.js, which contains an alert. Okay, now I'm gonna host that file on my localhost using Python 3 dash m http.server80. So that's going to start an HTTP server on port 80. But as you can see, that's only, only on my local network. So people from outside of my network won't be able to reach that. So that's an issue. We want it to be reachable from everywhere on the internet. And that is why I'm using ngrok here. So let me quickly show you my command here. So my command is ngrok http80. Now what is ngrok going to do? It's going to give you a domain name or a URL, like you see here. And every request that comes to that URL, it's gonna forward that to your local domain. So uh, as you can see here, uh, it will forward all every request that goes there into my local domain so it, it can access those files. So it's pretty much just forwarding that so that you have an internet facing URL to work with. So let's try that out. So if I copy this address and I open up a new tab here, and I enter it in the URL bar with xss.js. What will I get? Well, I will get my alerts that I created, the file that I created. So that's the whole idea behind it. And then here internally, you can also see that this was received. So it, it got a get request. And here you also see that it got it. It sent it through to my local uh, hosted server here. And that is what happens. But okay, all that besides, we just need to host a file. You can do that on any way you want. If you have a outward facing server running, and it's obviously very easy. Now, Back to here. We want to use this URL here because now, well, it will get our vulnerable xss.js and it will execute it, right? Let's find out. So I'm gonna press go and then we get, sorry, cannot load a URL containing HTTP. Okay, so HTTP is not allowed. Well, just change that to HTTPS. Uh, same error still, okay. Uh, and this is kind of an issue because we cannot use that. And this is where you have to get your creativity working again. How much do you know about JavaScript? Um, do you know that this might work? But, and it does, that works. That's a finicky feature uh, that a lot of people don't know about, but that works. Now, another way to go around that is to look at why it's being blocked. And if we look at that right here in the head in this script tag, then we see here that it's doing a match for HTTPS, but it never matches the uppercase characters. So if we just create this HTTPS, 
colon slash 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 in capital letters, then will that work as well? Well, yes, it will work as well. And we have solved this level. And that was level six. We saw another way of having an XSS happen through a script that's being loaded from somewhere. But throughout this series, we just saw a bunch of kinds of XSS reflected, DOM based in different contexts from different inputs. So not only from get parameters, but on also from that hash that we just saw. And these are kind of all things that can happen in websites. So I, I hope that from this series, you have taken some things away. You now feel more comfortable searching for XSS. Uh, you're doing it with a little bit more knowledge and more structurally as well. So I hope all of that worked out for you. If you did like this series, then please let us know down below in the comments and we might do something similar to this one in the future. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like it down below. Comment if you liked it and well, subscribe if you want to see more of me of the Integrity channel. That was it. I hope to see you in the next one.